It was perhaps the biggest art heist of all time. Countless millions of dollars of the finest European art simply seized by the Nazis. Picassos, Rembrandts, Titians, along with precious family silver and gold taken by the Nazis from museums and private collections as their army advanced relentlessly across Europe. Among the booty was one of the most extraordinary paintings of the 20th century, owned by a wealthy Jewish industrialist. It was a portrait of a woman by Austrian artist Gustav Klimt. For 60 years, the painting's owners fought to get it back. They were hoping I'd die. I mean, I was old enough that they fell, and then it's finished. The battle took them to the American Supreme Court. It's a story of mystery, corruption, and double dealing. Could they possibly fight a nation and win? Vienna at the beginning of the 20th century was a thriving metropolis that had become the cultural center of Austria and home to the rich and famous. It housed one of the world's greatest art galleries, boasted a world-class orchestra, and was full of beautiful buildings and aristocratic mansions. The city's famous coffee houses were teeming with intellectuals, artists, and musicians, such as Sigmund Freud, Egon Schiel, and Arnold Schoenberg and the man Viennese society flocked to for their portraits was Gustav Klimt. Klimt was already at his lifetime so highly paid, so there was no other painter in, in, in Austria who could uh, demand such prizes. And if you look at the f female portraits, who were these, these persons? They were all coming from the upper class. They were. Uh, wives of industrialists, of, uh, of academic professors. So uh, they really came from a very wealthy background. One person who could easily afford Klimt's prices was Ferdinand Blochbauer, who had amassed a significant collection of Austrian art. The Viennese had a sweet tooth, and he made his fortune by refining sugar. His wife, Adele, became a socialite who organized parties for Vienna's finest at their mansion. Her niece, Maria, was nine years old at the time. She surrounded herself with artists, composers. She had what they called a salon at the time. She had all these fabulous people, Richard Strauss and Wassermann. I mean, she had people, painters, poets, composers. And this is where she got her intellectual stimulation. Klimt was one of the artists who frequented the salon. He became a personal friend. But what would he charge to paint Adele's portrait? The price at that time was already extremely high. It was enormous. I think that it was as high as you could have acquired at that time a whole villa, a good land house, even in the suburbs in Vienna. It was that high. It may have been expensive, but Klimt's portrait of Adele would become one of the most famous paintings of the 20th century. This was one of only a handful of paintings from Klimt's famous golden period, in which he produced highly decorative work resembling a jewel box. Here is Adele in the most lavish dress, adorned with glittering jewelry. We know it took Klimt over a year to finalize the painting, and he visited her many times making over 200 sketches. We know from portraits which he prepared for one year, just the preparation. That's just thinking about how I want to have the posture of this woman. How should, should she, she stand? Should she st sit? Where should be the arms? And so Klimt really thought about all details and he made sketches of all different postures. I think it makes sense if you think he had really a personal relationship to this woman. He, he made a kind of reference to her. Because of course, by meeting so often the person, he gets to know her very well. And it, it said, I mean, there are rumors that with some of the sitters, with some of the models, he had even a more close uh, relationship 
maybe some sentimental affairs too. In the paintings of his golden period, Gustav Klimt seems to be capturing the seductive and passionate nature of these women. Many believe that Adele was also the model for The Kiss, one of the most sensual works ever produced. So could Adele have been Klimt's lover? When I asked my mother, did Adele have a relationship with Klimt? She said, how dare you ask such a question? It was an intellectual friendship. But my mother would always say that, even if when she was 100% sure that the people had more than an intellectual friendship. At the time, they had their affairs and didn't discuss it. We know that he had many children, illegitimate children, with women whom he didn't marry, he never was married. But we do not know exactly how many children there are, who were the women. I mean, this is incredible that such a famous painter had so many liaisons who were just hidden. Whatever the relationship between Adele and the artist, Ferdinand and his wife were delighted with the picture. It wasn't long before the portrait of Adele grasped the imagination of the art establishment. The painting became a centerpiece of Klimt exhibitions. The Bluckbauers wanted more Klimts and they invested in four of his landscapes painted between 1903 and 1916. In the summer, Klimt loved to escape from his studio and head out to the lakes near Strasbourg. This subject to which Klimt returned time and again held a special fascination for him. I think perhaps it was the combination of the natural geometry of the, the, the lake shore and then the, the buildings rising up, um, but with the, the steep hill behind them pushing forwards that held an attraction for him, but also the great natural combination of colours. Walking by the lake shore, he would be fascinated by the effect of light on the trees and flowers. And he was back in the autumn with a more subdued set of colors. Here, Klimt takes us this subject of birch forest, the innards of a forest in a glade. There was a reflection of perhaps getting deep into nature, being at the very heart of things. In truth, it's a fairly restricted palette. Green representing the lichen climbing up the trees and the leaf canopy, uh, the russet colors, earth colors for the, for the floor, and then the, the lovely silvery colors on the tree trunks. So Adele and Ferdinand's house in Vienna became home to one of the largest private collections of Klimt paintings. Adele's face seems to have inspired Klimt in his golden period. When he abruptly changed style in 1912, Adele was once again the subject he chose to paint. So here we have the second portrait of Adela Blockbauer, commissioned by her husband from Klimt in 1907, when Adela was in her late 20s and shot through this, what is a fairly muted color costume. You have the great blue, cobalt blue sash at her waist and, and fine details, highlights of blue throughout the costume. Another fascinating factor is the, is the Japanese influence all around her. She stands these Japanese tapestries behind. Here with the, the horse and rider themes running across the top, we see probably Klimt using something that was hanging in his studio as a backdrop. For 10 years, the house on Elisabethstrasse teemed with the color of Klimt's paintings. But in January 1925, the household sank into darkness and despair. Adele died of a brain disease at the age of 43. She died so very young. She was only in her early 40s, and she was only sick like three days because meningitis is devilish. I mean, it hits you and it kills you. Ferdinand was heartbroken. He left his wife's room in their Viennese home, just as it was when she died. 
I remember her bedroom, which she converted into a memorial room. And he always had beautiful fresh flowers there all year round. And there was nothing but the clean paintings, the, the two portraits and the landscapes. Ferdinand also placed a photograph of Gustav Klimt on her bedside table. Adele seemed clear about what she wanted to happen to her paintings. Her will stated, My wish is to leave my two portraits and four landscapes by Klimt to the Belvedere. The Belvedere was Austria's prestigious national gallery, where all society people wanted their portraits to be admired. This beautiful Baroque building in the heart of Vienna was a favorite meeting place for the rich and famous. But for the moment, at least, the painting remained in the room Ferdinand had left in memory of his wife. As the 1930s wore on, peace in Europe became increasingly fragile. The Nazis had come to power in Germany. Deutschland ist wieder eins geworden. Adolf Hitler, unser geliebter Führer. Hitler's territorial ambitions soon became clear. Ferdinand foresaw Germany's intention to invade Austria and used his wealth to support resistance fighters to protect its borders. But that proved futile. In 1938, Hitler ordered the annexation of Austria and German troops marched into Vienna. Before the Nazis arrived in the Austrian capital, Ferdinand fled to his country mansion across the border in Czechoslovakia, leaving the precious portrait of his wife by Klimt behind, with the rest of his art collection on the walls of his Vienna house. As he left the house for the last time, he would have walked past the Academy of Fine Arts right across the street. The shadow of Hitler hung over this place. The Academy had rejected him in 1907, the very year Klimt was painting the gold portrait of Adele. Hitler may have left Vienna as a failed artist, but in March 1938, he came back in very different circumstances and Viennese Jews grew to fear the knock on the door. They just came and took things, you know. They didn't ask you. They just rang the doorbell and I opened and there they were. And they were not in uniform because it was Gestapo, you know, and they didn't wear uniforms. They immediately asked me for my jewelry, which I had just gotten from my uncle for my wedding present. It was Adele's beautiful diamond necklace with uh, the earrings to match, and that went to Mrs. Goering. Hermann Göring was one of the main architects of the Third Reich, an era he believed would produce a thousand glorious years of German achievement. As an aristocrat, he saw music and art as part of this great age. As in most things, the Nazis were very organized about their looting. When they were deciding which countries they were going to invade and what their plans for invasion were, they would send out spies or uh, scouts, if you like, to, to see what collections were worth seizing, so that when they went into the country, when, once they invaded, they would immediately go after those collections. It was a massive operation. These pictures show preparations for a huge exhibition of the looted art the Nazis had taken from all over France. Every work of art was inventoried, it was described, it was photographed, and then displays were put on for some of the, for the main Nazi leaders, for Hitler and for Goering, so that they could take their pick of the best of some of the world's art. 
Um, there were sometimes d disputes between Hitler and Goering as